know you're part of the night side, well, you're afternoon, really, but you know the night side people. Mm -hmm. We've been commenting on this for a while. <laughs> Could you write any smaller? That, I'm, not, I'm not in charge of that. That's, that's Nick. 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 My cell is Can we ask problem. you, the internet is buzzing. <laughs> Look at it. Could that font be any smaller? <laughs> could, yeah. That's Why is this so say. small? Legitimate question. I just want to be able to fit in any little box. But that's they do it. fit. There's Don't you love when Nick gives you that tone of like, we're all idiots? Yeah, we can make this bigger. We can make We can do a lot of things that we're not going to do. <laughs> <laughs> Be open. <laughs> Here we go. That's making a good game. Let's do a tiger. Give it up for Debbie Gibson, everyone. We oh. do it our own way. <laughs> yes! Oh, I'm gonna start crying and laughing so hard. Oh my god. I did not do that. <laughs> now, here's Jason. Welcome to Thursday. Hello, everybody. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Welcome to the show, everybody. I'm Jace. That was Nick. Don't you love Nick? That's know-it-all Nick on our assignment desk. Everybody has a Nick. Everybody has a Nick. You know, like, uh, cheers, Cliff and Norm. Everybody has a Nick in their office. We call him know-it-all Nick. That he just thinks he absolutely knows it all. I love him, though, yeah. Hey, uh, coming up on the show today, look, you all uh, in Chicago are still getting to know me, still getting to know our family. People in Seattle and our other markets know me pretty well. So I'm just going to say this. I'm playing a sport today. Oh. I'm, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, our, our audience coordinator is a little surprised by that, but... And our audience is too. I, I'm not a sporty guy at all. I flunked PE twice. Yeah. I, I couldn't climb that rope that you had to in junior high. So I say all this because today on the show, I'm playing, I'm practicing, I'm training with a professional soccer team. So if you, if you want to feel better about yourself, stay tuned to today's show. Just, I'm just going to say that. Roll it, Steve. Let's do this. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh. Audience, say hello to my sidekick sister, my Ed McMahon. She's prettier, though. It's Kendall. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hello. How you doing? I'd say I'm sorry for signing you up to play soccer, but I'm not. No, no. no. I, 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 a little spoiler alert here. Mm -hmm. I, I've done a lot. I basically have done everything in eight. This show's been on the air for eight years. I've basically, we, we have a series called Out of uh, 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 Fish, uh, Fish Out of Water. Water. Mm -hmm. It's me out of my comfort zone. We've done a lot of stuff. I was really afraid of this one, and I ended up having a great time. Good. Spoiler alert. You'll see it coming up. You'll see it coming up a little bit. <laughs> hey, um, it, it, it's called a relatable. I just, I wanted to share something with you mm -hmm. that, uh, that maybe some of you will relate to, kind of just a real honest moment. Um, other, it's been a fun week because you know the show expanded. But on a personal level, if you're if you're someone that has ever struggled with weight in your life, um, I, I want to talk to you for a second because um, I'm a person that has struggled with weight his entire life. I've gone up, I've gone down, and over the last eight, nine, ten months, I've had a. It's been a stressful a year and I and I put on weight recently and the last few months I have worked my butt off and um, worked my butt off and if you've noticed if you watch the show with regularity not you in Chicago yet but you noticed I kind of wore the same suits or I wore those sweaters and it was kind of masking something that was a little embarrassing for me and that was because a lot of my suits didn't fit because I had put on weight and suits don't lie. Hips don't lie with Shakira, and suits don't lie. And, um, and it was humbling, you know, I would go in the dressing room most days over the last 10 months, and it was hard for me. There were two suits that fit, and um, that's not easy to say, it's not easy to admit on TV, um, it's embarrassing, um, but it's real, it happened, and um, I gotta tell you that I haven't been able to wear this suit for like 10 months. And I put it on today and it fit. 
and it's better than an Emmy, it's better than a good rating, it's better than anything, and I just feel really good right now. I feel yeah. really good. Good. I had no idea. Yeah. I didn't. It's polarizing. It's not polarizing. It's um, it's debilitating. I mean, I would be Kendall and I. Our dressing rooms are the across from us, mm -hmm. and I would be in the dressing room sometimes, and I would look in the mirror, and I'm just like, I would. I, I'm surprised you never heard me. I would get really upset, and I would look at myself in the mirror and go, "You are just fat and ugly." Like I, I used to. No, no. I'm just saying. It just. I would have really horrible moments. Moments before I would come out here to be happy for all of you, mm -hmm. I it was it's debilitating, and I've struggled with it my whole life. Look, I'll I'll go up again a little bit probably, but I have worked really really hard the past couple months, several months, um, just trying to get back to being healthy because I love to run, and I just when your life is out of balance, that's sometimes the first thing to go. And my life has been a little out of balance the last year or so. It's been stressful, um, so yeah. So I'm just kind of. I genuinely yeah. had no yeah. idea. You had no idea. No, you never. I, I never got that impression sitting with you, not even just here, but hanging out after work or before we come onto the show. I had zero, zero idea. So it's. I'm really happy for you that yeah. you're feeling like yourself again. Yeah, you and I both, because we we both bond over over issues I like just this. really like donuts and sometimes it's hard seriously yeah <laughs> donuts and for me chicken wings i mean uh, you know what i mean it's my food but anyway um if you've ever felt like this uh to quote nene leaks we see each other i hear you and i i hate when people say i know how you feel but i want you to know when you watch me i know how you feel and i know how hard it is so um i'm just trying to enjoy today so yeah. thanks everybody for listening let's get started everybody it's time for the hot dish rolling <laughs> First up, uh, part three of the dramatic Vanderpump Rules reunion aired last night. You guys know, I don't, I don't watch this, but I know that you do, and I just love drama, so this is full <laughs> of drama. And Raquel, who was involved in the uh, Tom Sandoval love triangle, joined for the first time. She waited till part three, and it went as well as y you'd think it went. Look. Super, super selfish, and Ariana- Selfish does not cover it. Diabolical, demented, disgusting, subhuman. Mm -hmm. Start getting a better vocabulary to describe your actions. Actually, selfish does not cover I it. I feel like my actions are human. It's not exactly at that. All. No, no. I, can no, I tell you? Not, no. That's not human behavior. Not at all. Have you watched? Have you watched not the guys, episodes? You're guys. lying to okay. Ariana's face. It's Sandoval? easy for you to say that. You gotta like, be quiet. It's no, I don't you have to be quiet. quiet. Right now. Yes, you do. Because what's yeah, sick about up, this? Tom. Let's talk about this. No, no, no. You, shut, shut up. I'm talking. You shut up. I'm gonna talk. You've been talking. Shut up. And I'm gonna continue to talk. Shut the. Yeah. No, you've been talking. And I'm going to continue to you keep shut talking. Up, shut the up. I would love to hear what both of you have to say. Oh. <laughs> it's like a Jason Show pre-show meeting. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Some days. <laughs> okay, I'm confused. Who did, okay, who was he dating and who did he cheat with? The blonde? The blonde he, was his... Yeah, the, the blonde, blonde was, was the his girlfriend, girlfriend of forever. Ten years, forever. Uh -huh. And then he cheated on her with the brunette. Yeah. Who hasn't been in a special because I, I, I'm assuming it had something to do with the restraining order that she had that was dropped. Yes. The <laughs> fact that you have to say restraining order when we're talking about the show. Anyway, well, there was, there was more. Um, the conversation, uh, and the conversation was happening, happening at about a fifth grade level. Um, so that's going to be fun. Let's look at that. Where do you think you and Tom will be a year from now? I don't know. I, it's too soon to say. Tom, same question. Yeah. I in mean, a poop look, house. <laughs> in a house made of dog <laughs> Right. All right. Poop a house. poopy house. Stinky poop house. I would okay. love to see that, actually. Yeah, you would. You're used to living in <laughs> aren't Wasting you? time. Weirdo. Wasting Creeper. time. Poo poo head. <laughs> Both of you, poo poo heads. Moronic. Poo poo head. Stop it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's like we're looking in a mirror. It's like that's again the level of our meetings about that. The poo poo heads. The poo poo heads. That's right. <laughs> really? That's how? That's not fake? That's how they talk to each other? Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh. His own special thing, though. Oh, Jamie's his own special thing? Okay. 
Oh for years. God. He was engaged to Raquel. I love that oh. audience coordinator Aaron and executive producer Jeff are trying to give us like a <laughs> diagram, diagram about this show. Yeah, I, Just like, it's amazing. I, if I was Andy Cohen, I'd have three Xanax and two tequilas. Oh, Just to sit there. you know Andy went drinking with Anderson <laughs> Cooper right <laughs> after that. Oh yeah. God. Next in the dish, Disney Plus just dropped the trailer for uh, the next Star Wars series. And look, Star Wars fans nowadays, just like the country, can't agree on much, but they can agree that we're all excited about this. Ahsoka with Rosario da uh, Dawson, they, uh, uh, they dropped a, a pretty good teaser, look. It's been a while. Things have changed. I started hearing whispers about Thrawn's return as heir to the Empire. We have to prepare for the worst. Okay. The Jedi fell a long time ago. There aren't many left. Perhaps it is time to begin again. Ahsoka, original series streaming August 23rd. Yeah. So, if you're not a Star Wars, Star Wars nerd like me, Ahsoka was the um, kind of trainee, <laughs> the, the Padawan, to Anakin Skywalker slash Darth Vader. She was Vader. the me to Jason. Exactly, yes, Padawan, you're Ahsoka. Jedi. <laughs> uh, and then she was a Jedi, she left the Order. She's an insanely popular character. Mm -hmm. Insanely popular. She uh, debuted in the animated series Clone Wars. She was a character developed by George Lucas. Um, and people love her. And again, the Star Wars fans are very divided. Uh, but everyone kind of agrees this looks really good, and I agree. Um, and Rosario, perfect casting for mm -hmm. Ahsoka. If you look at the animated version, and it's beautiful. Lots more to come, but first, don't forget to join us in our studio. Get your tickets right now for next week. We have openings every day. Just go to eventbrite.com and search for The Jason Show. And just in case you do need to be reminded, they're free. This ain't Taylor Swift. Uh, as we, uh, please, I mean, uh, it's not three hours, too. As we go to break, more audience selfies from this week. We'll be right back. Stay with us, everybody. Author uh, Jenny Prem's coming up. Uh, let me just tell you a story right there. Uh, and I can't wait to talk to her because uh, I can relate. And that's uh -huh. all I'm going to say about that. Uh, that's coming up a little bit. But right now, more hot dish. The new season of The Real Housewives of Orange County debuted last night on Bravo. And OG Tamara, she's back. And she was on. Yeah, I love Tamara. Afterwards, she was on with Andy. It's our Late Night Rewind. Tamara is a Bravo fan yourself. Who is the most overrated housewife of all time? Teresa. Wow. Okay, spin it around. Um, Tamara, when do you think Vicky knew Brooks was lying about having cancer? Okay, spin it around. Well, probably from the beginning, yeah. Uh, uh -oh. who, uh, I, I, I had a different answer, because you guys know I love the Housewives. I have a different answer. Overrated and I, Housewife? Uh, overrated Housewife, and I hate saying this because I like her. Kyle. No. Kyle Richards. I know Aaron, audience no. coordinator Aaron. I like I Kyle. love Kyle. I love her because I think she's actually like a decent person. Uh -huh. But I sometimes she can be a little snoozeville. Sometimes. She has brought it. Now, let me... She's brought it recently with the drama with Renna and the drama with Vanderpump a couple seasons ago, but there are times when it's like eating a very, very stale rice cracker. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, that was mean. Not a lot of flavor. Okay. Just saying. I'm so sorry. And I like rice crackers. I mean, hello. That's all I've been eating to get in this suit. I'm just saying. <laughs> just kidding. Our hot dish. <laughs> our hot dish continues with our insider to the stars. He's not boring at all. Give it up for Dax Holt, everybody, from the Hollywood Raw podcast. Hi, buddy. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. And good morning to Chicago as well, by the way. That's right. 
Chicago, that's Dax Holt. Well, you know him from TMZ and from Hollywood Raw. Okay, uh, who did you guys have on the podcast this week? Uh, you know, uh, these are my favorite episodes, but we had on a street photographer. His name is Justin Foley. He actually used to work at TMZ. Uh, he now does his own thing. But uh, I love getting these stories from people who are out in the wild with celebrities, uh, taking photos of them, taking videos of them, you know, kind of really how it goes down. But he's been really successful throughout the years. Um, got into one of his, I guess the video that he looks back on kind of the fondest. Um, he had the last interview with Whitney Houston um, a day before she passed away. Uh, when she had come into town and he got her coming out of the hotel and it was really just him and he talks all about that interaction and what she talked about and you know he was like it's crazy to look back and not know that the next day she would be gone oh that's yeah. I, I i knew that she gave a couple interviews because that was leading up to the grammys i always remember yeah. that wasn't it, wasn't it the grammys yes it yeah. was the grammys yep and he said that i guess uh the, she came out, he said something, it didn't go well, and then he talked to her bodyguard and said, like, can I have a second try? And she came out and gave him, a, you know, a great interview and, and then was gone. That was it. Yeah. Uh, and, and, so, and you know this, I, Dak, she didn't do a lot. She did not do a lot of interviews at mm -hmm. all. No, no, she didn't. And uh, I think that's why it sticks out so much in his brain. It's just like, you know, she gave me the opportunity and, you know, I had no idea that would that would be it. But not only that, he I mean, he's interviewed so many big celebs and we got into that and we just said, what's the craziest interview you've ever had? Like the one that you didn't expect. He goes, well, I did interview Demi Lovato's drug dealer. And I was like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Yeah, he goes, so that one was just a weird happenstance, so he got into that as well. But I'm telling you, this whole episode is totally fascinating. I, you know, I, I love, again, it just, it's the interaction with celebrities in the street and how some people obviously hate the camera guys and how other people really are like, no, I, I want to give a great interview because I know that this interview can be bigger sometimes than a sit down interview on like a, a nightly talk show. Yeah. I'm like a Diane Sawyer interview. Sometimes it does more for him. Yeah, exactly. I love it. So. Yeah. And I heard uh, I, I got wind that you were um, somebody's in that episode sent you a little question that uh, got a hold of you from the Jason show and you were very nice to us. You said you enjoy our show. So thank you, oh. Dax. Yeah, 100%. I had one of uh, your fans out there say that they listen to the show every week and they left a review. And uh, we, we do appreciate all of our, our fans that you have uh, passed on. I love it. Thank you so much, Jason. Well, and now Chicago. Chicago, that's Dax, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. We'll see you next Thank week. Thank you. Subscribe to the Hollywood Raw podcast right now, wherever you get your podcast. It's under uh, uh, under entertainment. Entertainment. They do. They would have the best stories. Mm -hmm. They're in the wild. Right. You know, <laughs> like David Attenborough. The you know, they're in the wild with the uh -huh. with the stars. <laughs> next in the dish, Tom Holland needs some time off after his most recent project. Tom stars in the upcoming Apple TV Plus series, The Crowded Room. He says the experience was so emotionally taxing that he needs to take off uh, a year off from acting. Now, the show, the series that we haven't seen yet, I saw the trailer, looks really good, follows a guy who was arrested for his involvement in a 1979 New York City shooting. He plays the character who is known as the campus rapist. The first three episodes uh, drop on Apple TV Plus tomorrow. As you can see, uh, I think it's the director of A Beautiful Mind or the, one of the producers mm -hmm. of The Beautiful Mind. But, well, I would imagine we are not actors, but if you get yeah. in that headspace, you get in that mind space for a long period of time. I've heard, um, I just watched an interview with uh, Evan Peters. Yes. I was just thinking uh, of did him. Did you see that too? I just saw, talking about getting into the mind space, of, of Jeffrey, Jeffrey Dahmer, Dahmer. Mm -hmm. and then you go home and you try to separate yourself but you you know what I mean you spend mm -hmm. your whole work day as a serial killer or in this case somebody accused of a heinous crime you go home and you're just trying to eat some chicken you know what I mean and how do you <laughs> how do you do how it? do you separate that it would do things with your mind right and I mean he says a year now that could change of course some epic script could land on his desk and it could feel great and move on but well, they want to do spider-man 4 there you go. There's yeah. your epic script we're talking yeah. about. They do. They greenlit it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I can't imagine that. My mind doesn't work that way. I 
think it would just be, it would be not possible for me to separate myself. And I know it's easy. <laughs> and awful. admittedly, I'm not going to sit up here and act like I didn't at first glance of the story go, really. Uh, because, but I'm 48, I'm jilted, I'm bitter, <laughs> and I, I, you know. And, he said what? Yeah, but, uh, but, but here's a compliment rolled into that. This is a compliment to the youngins watching. God bless you, because you know, y'all take care of your mental health in a way that we did not in the 70s and 80s. You know what I mean? We did not. So bravo for you. Look at Shawn Mendes. Shawn Mendes was got ready to do a huge tour. Yes. And he's like, nope. Yep. Nope, Can't. I need to meditate. Mm -hmm. And he went home. You know yep. what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm going home. We couldn't do that in the 70s and 80s, no. you know? We still can't we do still, that well, now. And we can't do that here. At, uh, anyway, uh, I love our bosses. It's fantastic. Woo, Tom Ball, next in the dish. When you think of an iconic movie studio in Hollywood, that was for the cruise. Um, Warner Brothers has to be one of the first to come to mind. Warner Brothers, obviously. If I, you know, if I were to play a game with you and say, mm -hmm. name a historic studio. Warner Brothers. Thank you. Recently. <laughs> 21st Century Fox. I don't know. Sorry. We used to own that. So that very, you're Poor playing the company girl real well today. I love it. Anyway, uh, last night I watched two episodes of the new docu series on Max called One, 100 Years of Warner Brothers. Before I give you, there's, okay, look at this clip. We'll talk about it on their side. The factory system was breaking down. It has been described as one of the worst business deals in the history of business. We all looked to Warner Brothers for films that had a special quality to them and took chances. They were very brave at times that were not easy to be very brave. They were always a studio that took risks. And they walked that bell. If you're going to go up to the bell, ring it. Hey, boys, look what I got here. Hey, where are the white women at? And I've been ringing that bell ever since. <laughs> We don't know if it'll work. Let's just try it. You have to invest in stories that make people uncomfortable and have never been told before. People being able to see their own stories. It is the greatest sense of validation. If I'm, let me speak 37,000 feet above the, the special, of uh, the overarching theme, and it's not just a, um, um, what can I say, like a tagline for this, it's not a promotional line for Warner Brothers. Um, taking risks is what you, what really Warner Brothers, you learn is known for, really. That should be its legacy and it is. It did, whether it's the 30s, the 40s, moving into the 60s and the counterculture and embracing the counterculture of the late 60s, Warner Brothers did it first and they did it better than more of the other more conservative, not conservative politically, but, but um, uh, pop culturally conservative uh, studios like MGM and 20th Century Fox at the time. The first two episodes, a play out like an episode of Vanderpump Rules. And what I mean by that drama. is, but, but a family drama, almost like succession, because Warner Brothers, there really were the Brothers Warner. There were brother, Warner Brothers that started the company. <laughs> and the main one, the one uh, Jack Warner ran Warner Brothers famously for years. He ran production. And there's two stories that stuck out, and I'll try to make this real concise. The first is um, women in Hollywood Everyone, every woman in Hollywood needs to a tip of the hat to Betty Davis because Betty Davis was the first woman in Hollywood to stand up to the awful working conditions in the studio system of Hollywood, meaning you are basically bound to this contract for seven years right. under really bad conditions. They tell a story in episode one where Betty Davis uh, stormed into Jack Warner's office. The secretary's trying to stop her. He, she goes in, Jack Warner is not in his office, but she sees a door. That door leads to Jack Warner's private bathroom. Betty Davis kicked open the door and there Jack Warner sits on the toilet. <laughs> and Betty Davis <laughs> proceeded to tell him all about himself. And I thought, yes, Betty Davis. Oh, it's fantastic. That's awesome. And then Jack Warner, I don't want to give anything away if you don't know the history of it. Jack Warner does something dirty to his brothers, mm -hmm. which leads to him basically taking over Warner Brothers in 66, 67. Fascinating. You don't need to be a pop culture nerd to love this, because like I say, it plays out like a great Shakespearean drama. And you also get to see the backstory of some of your favorite movies, like Blazing Saddles, which by the way, could never be made today. The Shining. Um, Casablanca. Casablanca. 
you guys will love this. 100 Years of Warner Brothers is available right now, four episodes on Max. Okay, Woo! let's meet today's uh, JVIP. Today it's Sharon from Silver Lake. Hi, Sharon. Uh, Sharon writes to us that she loves that we are humble folks and just like those who watch the show. Sharon says, I'm uh, more real than others on TV. Well, Sharon must have loved today when I was just basically telling you I, <laughs> I couldn't fit into clothes for four months. Anyway, <laughs> she switched from watching Price is Right to our show. Yeah. Well, yes. Sharon, let me tell you, I'm coming over to your house and I'm making you dinner. Anyway, Sharon gets a mug. She's also entered to win the monthly grand prize. All kidding aside, that includes being a VIP guest in our studio, a $150 gift card to Becker Furniture World, and a $150 gift card to the Institute of Advanced Aesthetics. We have such a good show. Go get some more coffee. We'll be back right after this, back in a moment. Coming up, an unbelievable story of deception. Meet the author who thought she found the love of her life, only to find out he wasn't quite what, um, well, quite what he advertised. You'll hear the story in just a little bit. Then, why don't we start with a simple one? We'll just. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a fish out of water again, and this time I'm playing soccer. Oh God! Ow! Ow! With the phenomenal ladies of the Aurora. That and more when we come back. Always a good day when we love our guest shoes. So our first guest, uh, set, next guest rather, I should say, thought she had found the love of her life. He was everything she was looking for. But then things started to go a little south and bit by bit she realized maybe the guy isn't who she thought he was. And then she wrote a book about it. <laughs> Give it up for the author of You're My Favorite, Jenny Prem, everybody. Hi, Jenny. Thank you. Hello. Okay, I told Jenny during the break that I have a story um, very similar, but I want to hear the nuts and bolts of yours. Um, we're going to call, you call him Chad mm -hmm. in the book. Um, and Chad, let me just set this up too, is still out there. Let's just say that right off the bat. How did you meet Chad? Um, it was kind of a casual encounter. We met on a boat and I wasn't really interested in dating him. Partly because my life was so good, but yep. partly because he had two kids. And so I was a little bit hesitant, but... Young kids? Young kids. Okay. Mm -hmm. And part of the reason why I call him Chad to tie that in is because I'm still very close with his kids and ex-wife. Oh. Oh, yes. Yeah, so that... God, I love you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So that speaks a little bit to the you know, the situation uh -huh. and the scenario that we have a very close relationship. Um, but yeah, that's how we met. And I was a little bit slow and he kind of, you know, opened the door a little bit and I fell in love with him. And I also fell in love with his kids. When did you, cause y'all should read the books. So we're not gonna give obviously everything away, but do you remember, you just said you were deeply in love. Do you remember a first sign or something that you were like, ooh, your spidey sense was tingling. Oh yeah, when I found lingerie tags in the bathroom basket that weren't my size. That, that was the first one. We'll be right back. <laughs> no, well, um, really? <laughs> really, yeah. Lingerie tags. Yes, and he is a master manipulator, so he talked his way out of it. You know, crocodile tears, like I was abandoned when I was a child, and you shouldn't make fun of that, right? Like that is a serious thing, yeah. but just has a really great way of the manipulative tactics to kind of pull you back in and excuse things away. It's fascinating. Okay, so you find the lingerie tags and you confront him. Did you, uh, did you buy in the back of your mind, did you buy his explanation? In hindsight, no. Okay. But I was too far in at that point where it was, it's almost like harder to let go than it is to think about what your future could look like by exiting, if that makes sense. Absolutely, especially people can relate because especially you are now commit, you're committed and you love his family. You are, you like the life, you like, I, I, I get it. I, I, people can probably relate to that. Okay, did things get worse from there? Yes, like when I got shingles on my face, because my body was so stressed. Really? Yeah. 
How long did this go on? Uh, we were together just shy of a year and a half. Okay. Yeah. And how much of that was good and what portion of that pie was bad? Um, you know, I think overall it looked good from the outside, right? Like that's a big part of it is he likes to portray a certain image of himself. And so I think for me, a lot of it was then I had this instant family and I really did love it. Yeah. And so I think a good portion of it seemed good, but there was always this nagging thing in the back of my mind, at least for a good portion of the relationship. But when it was over, it was over. Okay, but he lied about the lingerie, uh, the lingerie. Did the deceptions get more, not that that wasn't serious, but did the deceptions get more serious and more horrible? Yes. So it's not even just cheating. And, and I know a lot of times people will say that they'll read my book and they'll be like, oh, a lot of people get cheated on. But there's a financial deception. There's this whole portrayal of him being who he is. Uh, he loves Schedule 2 and Schedule 3 drugs, which was something that he denies. But recently, some other women have sent me photos and documentation that they have done these things with him while he was with me. Um, you know, there was the finding him on kinky websites. There, there's, there's a whole slew of things. We, we would need a lot more than... Uh, Two television <laughs> morning show segments, yeah. Well, we're going to have another one, though, when we come back. More with Jenny when we return. Back in a moment. Oh, my goodness. Well, I mean, hello, the book is that thick, so there are stories. Welcome back, everyone. More with author Jenny Prem, the book, You're My Favorite. What's the title about? Do, I mean, is there a reason? There, there is has a to reason. be. Okay, yeah. I don't no. want to give away. Okay. Well, yeah, can you sign it? <laughs> sure. So it, it was kind of, it was the phrase that I came up with to say, I love you before that became comfortable for me. Yeah. Oh, you're my favorite. Mm -hmm. Okay, I like that. Yeah. Um, and little did I know the actual meaning that it had. Like, how many were there? Yeah, I how many know. favorites who, were there? Who knows? Who are you buying that lingerie for? <laughs> okay, so deception, 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 deception. You kick them out. You then realize, as the Michael Jackson song saying, you are not alone. And you went on. There is a, thank you. That was a horrible imitation, but... There's a Facebook group, right? Tell the folks about this. This okay. is so fascinating to me. This is a recent development. So I got invited into this secret Facebook group where you can find out information like red flags, tea. A photo of him was posted and instantly there was like 100 women commenting. Like, I, I don't even know it's how like many an, there It's are. like an old Western wanted photo. Yes, yeah. it is. And then another one was posted within like the same week and the comments ensued. Well, what happened is all of these women started talking with each other in the DMs. They started sharing my book with each other. And then they all started reaching out to me saying, I also am a survivor of the real life Chad. And that's where all of this information has, like this recent information has been coming from. Like they've been sending me additional photos and screenshots and documentation. A lot of it, like one woman was dating him on and off for eight years. She's gonna come on my podcast. What? Yeah, yeah. And a lot of these women, I'm just doing the math, probably intersected your relationship. Yes. There probably weren't a lot of 694s. They were all <laughs> straight 35W during your, yeah, yes. yeah. That's a highway here, 94 in Chicago. There we go, yeah. Well, let me just tell you, because I, I, I hate when people say I know how you feel, but one of the reasons, other than we have mutual friends, and I loved your story, I know how you feel, because I've, I've talked about this before. Um, I had a guy that I dated uh, who said that, uh, th that they worked for the Hillary Clinton campaign, uh, was a tennis officiant, architect, uh, ran for public office, and was British. Um, everything that I just listed was, uh, there's one thing true, and it wasn't British. Um, <laughs> he was not British uh, and uh, didn't work for the Hillary Clinton campaign, got us into an event as I die my last breaths on earth, I will always wonder how did he get us into that event? Because I was like this close to Hillary going, hey girl, you know what I mean? Wow. And anyway, and afterwards, just like you, I got into contact with someone, a survivor of this person as well. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was, so I, yeah. I say that not to take the focus off you, but I 
get you. I get it. I get it. But that's a lot of what it's about is I'm really grateful that I did have the capability to be vulner vulnerable enough to share my story because it has provided validation and connection and community for so many people. And of course I wanted to raise awareness of the chads of the world, but I had no idea how many women were actual victims of chads. The, the chad. The chad. The chad. Not this multiple the chads, the chad, yeah. Uh, talk, you mentioned, talk to us before we go, uh, your podcast. Oh yeah, it's called Drinking with Jen. So we have relatable chats. I'm there already. Drinks. Okay, yes, yeah. Exactly. And it's really a life improvement podcast. So it's like the story in the book is juicy, and this Facebook group is is juicy. But I like to talk about the the growing and the healing journey as well. So I bring on expert guests, and we have just really great conversations. Because that's the entry point. That's the beginning of the story. There's more. There's the end of the story too, and there's the growth that comes from it. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Come, exactly. come back anytime. Oh, I would love Give to. it up for Ginny, everybody. As we said, check out her podcast, Drinking with Jen, wherever you get your podcast. And you're my favorite, available right now on Amazon. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. Um, welcome back. Woo, welcome back to the show. I said a version of this at the top of the broadcast. Over the years, uh, you've seen my attempts at learning to play pickleball. I've tried golf. I do like golf. Uh, even cross-country skiing. Look, I'm, I'm not sporty spice by any stretch of the imagination. Again, I flunked PE. But recently, Kendall signed me up uh, to see if I could cut it with some of the best soccer players around. So, um, uh, so it hit the pitch. Is that the term? Am I saying it right? Okay. I can't even read the intro right, let alone play. So it hit the pitch with the Minnesota Aurora. I don't understand what I just said. It's our latest fish out of water. What's this drill called? Skills ladder, okay. I'm here training with ladies from Aurora. And they're doing a drill called the skills ladder. Skills ladder? Skills ladder. Holy crap. I got a question. Do you have either skills or a ladder? <laughs> I have neither a skill. I have neither a skill nor a ladder. Oh. Oh, they're hitting the balls on their head. I guess the head is legal in soccer. <laughs> Why are you laughing? You know, this might be the first time that big head comes in. That's a uh, really good point. Yeah. My giant melon might actually be in it. There's more circumference for the ball to hit. Oh, now they're kicking. You know, I'm gonna uh, give you a good chance on the head thing, but the whole uh, feet. <laughs> Maybe not. I am a size 13 though. Oh. Big head, size 13 to 14. Are you excited to train Jason? I am very excited. I've never done anything like this before, so it should be fun. Neither have I. <laughs> uh, on a scale of one to 10, rank him as a physical specimen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna Morgan, give him 11 out of 10. You, Morgan. He looks like he's gonna do great. Thank you, Eric. No yeah. more leading questions. Just give me a I'm right here. <laughs> I'm right here. <laughs> give me, give me a 11 and a half pose. <laughs> That's pretty good. Thank you, Morgan. <laughs> you were doing a genius. You're more supportive. I was kind of doing the, the Charleston. Okay, Morgan, I, I watched the drill. Uh -huh. Give me some tips. So when we're heading the ball on the skills ladder, there's a sweet spot. We don't want to hit the top of our head because that'll hurt. Okay. And then if you hit too low, you're going to hit the nose. Okay, and then so there's like a Marcia sweet... Brady. Hey, you guys. Oh, my nose. Um, the other thing is you don't want to let the ball hit you. You want to attack it. Let's do that drill first because this one. The, the kicking. The kicking it's one. It's a little bit of a level up, okay. but we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> Morgan has more faith in my <laughs> than photographer Eric has in me. Thank you, Eric. You, you mean the, the, the jigging drill? <laughs> the Charleston. <laughs> that one. You just want to just... direct it right back oh. to the hand. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> okay. If anything happens, I'm going to miss Thank you. <laughs> You're only going to miss me because you, your income relies on my well-being. 
If I die, the show goes away. When you, when I throw it to you, you want to try and head it back to my head. 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 Oh. <laughs> okay. Ready? Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Oh God. Ow! 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 Oh. I tried. I tried. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I hit it over there. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Attack it. Attack. Oh. It's okay. Did it hit the nose? <laughs> hit my nose a little bit on that one. <laughs> okay. One, two, three. What do you think there, Eric? <laughs> I what do you say now, Eric? I had no doubt about your head. <laughs> oh, that's right. You're worried about the Charlton. <laughs> I got the head one down, and now the... What do we do with this one? Okay, why don't we start with a simple one? We'll just do... <laughs> <Yes>! <laughs> we'll just do... Well, I probably should put my glasses back on, Yeah, right? glasses will so probably help, see. so you can see. Yeah, that would be helpful. I'm gonna use the inside part of your foot. Okay. And it's gonna go foot volley, foot volley, catch. And I catch and it. And you catch it. Oh, got it, okay. Got it? Yeah. Are you guys excited? Are you... Yeah, <laughs> let's go. Let's get it. All right. Three, two, one. Yeah! 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 That's awesome! <laughs> Eric, what would you like to say again to me? You are a sports god, Jason. <laughs> Thank you. A sports god. Thank you. Whatever. Bend it like Beckham. Bend it like Matheson. No, <laughs> I actually had fun. They're great. They're undefeated too. Oh, they're not just fun. They kick butt. Like uh -huh. they, they sold so many tickets uh, that the the stadium had mm -hmm. to open up the other side right. because they're so popular. Mm -hmm. I love it, and they were lovely. They were so nice to me and not uh, intimidated by the camera. They were superstars. And uh, go support them. They just beat Chicago, didn't they? Sorry, mm -hmm. Chicago. Uh, to learn more about the Aurora and the USLW League, head to mnaurora.com. Go get tickets wherever you are. Support women's sports. Yes. Support women's sports. So yeah, mm -hmm. thank you for setting that up. You're welcome. We'll be right back. <laughs> It's a private joke between me and the studio audience. Anyway, <laughs> hey, I want to thank the best in the biz. Uh, as you watch our show, you'll learn he's the best. So no other show can have him. Great work by photographer Eric on that piece right there, yeah, he's, he's the best around. Uh, it's your chance to show your love for the show with some of our official show merch. The Jason Show Swag Shop offers everything from mugs and water bottles to t-shirts, sweatshirts, and listen to this. The person that runs our merch store said, our beach towel is the best-selling beach towel in the history of their company. Yeah, that's right. I don't know. It's, it's, it's a nice towel. Anyway, aim your camera to the QR code. It will take you right to the store, or we put a link on our socials. We'll be right back, back in a moment. <laughs> it's the best-selling towel. And go to eventbrite.com and get tickets to our show. It is time for the surprise goodbye. You know how this works. I don't know what's in the segment until I read it live for the first time right now. Today, one dog tries to keep it cool when confronted with its bad behavior. Video from New Zealand shows three-year-old Mac acting like everything is okay after tearing his bed to shreds. Max owner recorded the video that now has <laughs> millions of views in just a few days. She said, this isn't the first time Mac has done this. 
and probably won't be his last. That's right. Tomorrow on the show, TikTok sensation and comedian Matt Matthews joins us live. We'll talk to him about his hilarious videos down on the farm, his stand up and more. But right now, that's going to do it for us. <laughs> if you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Have a fantastic day. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. Bye, everybody. Come on, Kendall. Let's go snack. Let's go to farm <laughs>